Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled The Fake Blood Red Moon of July 27, 2018. Now, a lunar eclipse was apparently scheduled to occur on July 27, 2018. And therefore, that was what was observed in the sky and transmitted by NASA from several observatories in various locations around the planet. However, there were several anomalies in the video footage of the moon, which indicate that the moon seen in those images uh, was not the real moon. I have written several times about the fact that we are not seeing the real, the real moon in the sky and that the last blood red moon was also fake. And you may look at article 151 entitled The Blood Red Moon Simulate at 30,000 Feet for more details. This blood red moon was no different. One flagrant anomaly was that the moon turned pink or magenta instead of orange or red during this eclipse according to at least one observatory, which is impossible as this would require blue light to be reaching the moon. And here you see some of these uh, photographs where the moon appears to be pink or magenta. It is supposed to be this color, not that color, not pink. Some orange red color, um, that's natural. But this pink is simply not natural. This is simply not possible. So, um, and there are other anomalies such as the edge, as you can see, uh, it seems to have a bright edge around here at the bottom. And this is also not normal. This is supposed to be the same color all the way to the bottom. This region here where you possibly some of the sun is still touching that edge can be brighter, but the edge uh, beyond a point where the moon looks dark red cannot be bright like that. So these are the anomalies I noticed. Now the moon turns red when it is eclipsed by the earth because the atmosphere scatters all wavelengths of visible light except for the red wavelength. The red light that is left of the sunlight is then reflected, refracted by the atmosphere so that it reaches the moon. And this is illustrated here. Um, light coming from the sun goes through the atmosphere. And so the blue light is uh, scattered out of that sunlight by the atmosphere. And then what is left is the red light. And when sunlight goes through a long length of atmosphere, both all the wavelengths are scattered out except for red. Then what's left is red, which is uh, also refracted by the atmosphere so that it is able to reach the moon. And the scattering process is illustrated by this image. You can see here it only shows the red and the blue. The blue is scattered by the particles in the atmosphere. That is, it's reflected of these particles or it's absorbed and then re-emitted uh, by these particles in all kinds of different directions. So it looks like blue light is coming from everywhere in the sky. So if an observer is here, the observer will see blue light coming from there, blue light coming from there, blue light coming from there. So for this observer, the sky looks blue, whilst the red light continues to move right through the atmosphere in a straight line. So the observer here sees a red light coming from this part of the atmosphere. Um, in actuality, you also have the green coming through, um, usually not scattered when sunlight comes, only moves through a, a short length of atmosphere. So you would get red and green, and the mixture of the red and green gives you yellow sunlight. That's why the sun would look yellow and all the blue would be coming from everywhere in the atmosphere making the sky blue. And when the sunlight goes through a longer length of um, atmosphere, it's not just the blue that is scattered. When it moves right through, only the blue is scattered uh, from the top, so at the midday position, when you get the blue scattered. 
but um, when the sun is at its sunset position it moves through more atmosphere then the green starts to be refracted out as well so sunlight then looks red the sunlight would uh, then move right through the atmosphere and this is just at this point it's a longer length that it would have to get through but in case of an eclipse the sunlight would have to go right through the atmosphere to the other side now um, the only sunlight reaching the moon at the time of an eclipse is sunlight that has passed through a very long length of atmosphere and so only the red part of the visible spectrum will be left in it and so there will be no green left and then the moon will uh, turn orange um, well if there is some green left then the moon will turn orange instead of red but it is impossible for it to turn magenta because that would require blue light to be illuminating the moon and here we see what the visible spectrum looks like. It starts with violet, and then there's blue, and there's cyan, green, yellow, uh, orange, red, and then this deep red. But uh, it can be divided up into three primary colors, because just these three colors will give us back the white light uh, of the visible spectrum. White light, we'll obtain a white light by mixing all these colors together, but uh, by just mixing the blue, the green, and this red, we will get white light as well. So these are uh, the primary colors that we divide the spectrum in, the, red, the blue, the green, and the red. The other colors can be obtained by mixing uh, these primary colors. For example, cyan is obtained by mixing blue and green. Yellow is obtained by mixing green and red in equal quantities. If you then just mix in a bit more red than green, you would get orange. Um, if in order to get magenta, you would have, this is illustrated here, you would have to mix equal quantities of blue and red. To get yellow, you, you mix equal quantities of green and red. And to get cyan, you, you mix equal quantities of green and blue. But to get the magenta, you have to mix the red and the blue. So there has to be blue still in sunlight in order for the moon to look magenta or pink. So this is just not possible because all the blue has been scattered out by the atmosphere. So um, this means that this was a fake, um, a fake um, eclipse. This could not possibly have been a real eclipse. There is no way that the moon could turn pink. It should be orange or red only. And the other thing that we see is this edge here. As you can see, it's not the same color as the moon is here. It's lighter. And this shows an anomaly which is just not possible if this was the real moon. And again indicates that um, this was a holographic projection in the sky. Now, the chemtrails have made our atmosphere very hazy, which makes observing objects outside our atmosphere difficult, which would also make seeing the real moon very difficult and thus necessary to simulate the moon and planets in the sky. In addition, the sun is going dark for at least three hours at a time and most likely is very dim when it is on at all. And you may look at article 291 entitled The Sun Disappears, Day Turns Into Night, and article 292 entitled The Sun Goes Dark, Effects on the Earth. For more details on that. If the sun does not illuminate the moon, then the moon would not be seen. The sun suddenly going dark would make the moon also suddenly disappear from view, which would make people realize that there was something wrong with the sun. If the sun never turns on, then the moon would not be seen at all. This problem was therefore solved by the powers that be by not only simulating the sun, but also the moon and the planets in the sky. And you may look at article 220 entitled Simulated Moon in the Sky for more details. It is not easy to get it right from every point on the surface of the earth, and this is why many anomalies are seen.
But another anomaly which is very strange in uh, this particular eclipse is that the time of totality of any lunar eclipse should not be any longer than 19 minutes. And during this eclipse, the time of totality was 103 minutes, over five times longer than it should have been. So in conclusion, the blood red moon of July 27th, 2018 was simulated. People saw a holographic projection of the moon and not the real moon. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planetics Physicist. Thank you for watching.